Hey, hey, this is Cynthia Thurlow. I'm coming to you on Wednesday night and I want to talk about a really hot topic. It comes up nearly daily with every single female client I work with. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Cynthia Thurlow. I am a nurse practitioner, a female hormonal health expert, and I want to talk to you tonight about what weight gain tells you and what it doesn't represent. So the old school mentality, when I trained as a nurse practitioner, when I trained as a nurse, we were taught that inflammation, excuse me, we were taught that weight gain is related to the simple calculation of how many calories you are consuming and how much exercise you do. And so that was the mentality that we had, that every time I saw a patient that was obese or was struggling with weight issues, it was because they either weren't disciplined, they weren't eating the right foods, or they weren't exercising enough. And so that was my mentality for a very long time. And I'm happy to tell you I now know better. So what I can tell you with complete assurance is that weight gain is representation of something that has gone awry in the body. Case in point number one, uh, inflammation. And so what does inflammation represent? Inflammation in an acute phase really talks about you stub your toe, you break a bone, your body gets inflamed to help heal you. But when it goes on chronically and habitually, you are talking about issues related to chronic inflammation, diabetes, insulin resistance, um, chronic pain, things as simple as food sensitivities, all are indicative. There are many other reasons, but inflammation drives weight gain. I can't tell you how many clients come to me that are horrendously inflamed, and that is why they cannot lose weight. They are struggling, they are depressed, they feel poorly about themselves because they continue to restrict their food intake, they exercise harder, they don't understand why the weight isn't coming off. It really isn't as simple as calories in and calories burned. The second reason this can happen is if you are sleeping poorly, and I see far too many women that do not sleep well. And what does that mean? That means they either have trouble falling asleep, trouble staying asleep, or they wake between 1 and 4 a.m. All of these issues can drive weight gain. And why does that happen? We have lots and lots of hormones in our body that when they're not properly supported, you will gain weight. Think about it as simply as if you're not getting enough sleep, and by sleep I put seven to eight hours a night, it is not sufficient, ladies, to be getting four or five hours a night. I do have clients who try to assure me they don't need more sleep than that, but unless you are manic or unless there's a unique set of circumstances, um, you should really be sleeping seven to eight hours a night. And as we get closer to perimenopause, and I want to bring this point up again, you don't have to be 50 years old to be in perimenopause. Ladies, in your 30s, you are probably in perimenopause. You know, estimates are anywhere from five to 10 years preceding menopause. Many women are going through menopause in their late 40s, early 50s. So if you are in your late 30s, you may very well be there. And there are many people that are going through menopause at earlier ages, sometimes early to mid 40s. Sometimes people don't find this out until they are struggling to conceive. So very, very important that we dial in on sleep. It's one of the most foundational things that I talk to my clients about on a daily basis. Um, yes, Kelly, you notice that your eating habits are totally different when you get better sleep. You don't crave crap. I know when I was breastfeeding um, and I was burning a gazillion calories a day and I was not sleeping well because I was up nursing an infant around the clock, I craved sugar, fast source of fuel, but it was still sugar. When your body's craving sugar, it's oftentimes because there's an imbalance, there's a disconnect between hormones like leptin and ghrelin that impact our, our hunger cues. Also things like cortisol, melatonin, serotonin, all in our, impact our ability to sleep properly. I want you to think about the cumulative effects of stress. It is so, so important that we acknowledge how much stress impacts our ability to lose weight. Um, and, and I talk about this because I think intrinsically, many, many people discount this as being a reason why they cannot sleep. If our body perceives that we are under significant threat, it is going to put us into fat storage mode. I always say if you're being chased by a saber-toothed tiger, your cortisol goes up and the first thing your body says is, I'm not sure when I'm getting my next meal, so I'm going to conserve what, what reserves I have. And so you will absolutely positively not lose weight if you are chronically, habitually stressed, sleep deprived, and inflamed. I also want you to think about toxins that you're exposed to. I will dance on this topic for, I could do a whole topic, just talking about this all night long, but the things we are exposed to in our food, our personal care products, and our environment are absolutely vital to our ability to lose weight. So if you think it's not important to eat 
organic, grass-fed, wild-caught meat and fish, you are foolish. That is one of the areas that is so, so important to prioritize. I recognize we all have budgets. Not everyone can spend, you know, five or $600 a week on food, but that is absolutely one area you should not skimp on is purchasing grass-fed meat, wild-caught fish. So, so important because the foods that we eat, you know, we are that the food with the foods that we eat. So when, when they talk about things like conventional meat is oftentimes fed, you know, cows and pigs are oftentimes fed things like Skittles because it's a cheap form of food resource for the farmers, you are then ingesting that crap, which none of us need to be doing. I want you to think about the fact that it is very important that we consider the, the products we use on our skin. Um, this is largely why I got involved with a mission with Beauty Counter because I think it's so, so important that we think about skin is our largest organ, so anything you put on your skin is being absorbed. There are lots of endocrine disrupting substances that we use on our skin that can impact our hormones in a negative way and also make it harder to lose weight. I want you to think about the things we're exposed to in the environment, things like fluoride, things like chlorine, things that we think are so benign and so necessary. Get a water filter for your home. You don't have to spend thousands of dollars on a whole house system, but you should be thinking about the water that you drink with, the water that you cook your food with. You should be thinking about the type of toothpaste you use in your bathroom. We don't need fluoride. I can actually provide some studies to demonstrate that you know, some of these indigenous cultures that aren't exposed to a standard American diet have no tooth decay, whereas standard American diet countries or countries that eat a lot of processed foods have significant tooth decay largely because of the sugar that we eat. And lastly, I want you to think most importantly, it is so vital that we are thinking about our emotions. Our emotions will drive weight gain and the inability to lose weight. Things like the people we are exposed to, or if you were in a toxic marriage, if you were in a toxic relationship, if you were in an existence, you can see one of my doodles behind me, if you are in a situation where the people you love and you are exposed to are very toxic, bring you down, make you feel badly about yourself, um, if you're in an emotionally abusive relationship, an emotionally unsupported relationship, you really need to think about that. Our environment is super, super important. The homes that we live in, the apartments we live in, the condos, um, if you're a city person and you prefer being in the country, if you're a country person, prefer being in the city, those things can also influence the, uh, the way that your body perceives the environment and its ability to manage stress properly. So I've given you a couple things to think about that weight gain is not simply as the old school mentality that it's all about how many calories you consume. And I have lots of clients who are on their, um, on their devices, monitoring every single calorie that they're eating and they're exercising excessively. It's not that simple. You have to dig deeper, super, super important. Something that we do talk a great deal about in Holistic Blueprint. I still have a couple slots in VIP. I still have plenty of room and core. We will be closing the doors on Monday. That will be the first day that we're going to be holding class. This is my six-week Holistic Blueprint program. It will be the last class I will be teaching this year. I would love for you to join us. It's been completely revamped. It is the best version of this class that I have taught yet. Um, and I brought hundreds of women through it. We're changing lives. It's so, so important. Let me know if you have any questions. Have a great evening. I'll put a link in the comments below about Holistic Blueprint if you'd like additional information. Have a great night.